this is what I'm going to be talking about next. So, uh, this is something. This is something I thought would be a somewhat interesting uh, story to cover. And this is, uh, I think, coming out of Florida. Evidence suggests several state Senate candidates were plants funded by dark money. So this is from local10.com which I believe, yes, is in Miami. This was uh, something not on the subject of Trump plotting a coup, but I just wanted to kind of throw it in here because it's super interesting. Um, So, why would candidates for Florida Senate seats do no campaigning, no fundraising, have no issue platforms, nor make any effort to get votes? Local 10 News has found evidence to suggest three such candidates in three Florida Senate district races, two of them in Miami-Dade County, were shill candidates whose presence in the race was meant to siphon votes from Democratic candidates. Comparisons of the no-party candidate. Now, again, real quick, look at the results here. 104,616, 104,585, 6,377. Like, look at these results, right? Look at these results. Like, again, it's it's, it's crazy how close that election was. And then you've got, like, a fake third-party candidate that doesn't even exist. They're, like, not even a real person. Um, It's bizarre stuff. Comparisons of the no-party candidate's public campaign records show similarities and connections that suggest they are all linked by funding from the same dark money donors and part of an elaborate scheme to upset voting patterns. In one of those races, District 37, a recount is underway because the spread between the Democratic and Republican candidates is only 31 votes. The third party candidate received more than 6,300 votes. Now imagine you're someone in the voting booth and you vote for someone that doesn't exist. Like that's like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say you shouldn't blame voters. Voters are just, you know, you should blame the parties for like blah, blah, blah. But Jesus Christ, 6,000 dumb motherfuckers voted for someone that doesn't exist. God damn. Right? Like that is some incredible cringe. That third-party candidate is Alec Alexis Rodriguez, who has the same last name as the Democratic incumbent senator, Jose Javier Rodriguez. The Republican challenger is Eilina Garcia. Alexis Rodriguez falsified his address on his campaign filing form last June. Are you sure it's a his? Who knows if this made-up person is a female? Come on, Alexis? Maybe that's a, maybe that's a man's name. I'm not sure. I don't know. Here in like white person land, Alexis is a is a woman's name, but it could be different. I don't know for other people, but hey, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there, giving that out there. The couple who now live at the Palmetto Bay address say they have been repeatedly harassed since then by people looking for Rodriguez who hadn't lived there in five years. Local 10 visited Rodriguez's place of business Tuesday where, where Rodriguez lied about his identity, pretending to be a business partner. Rodriguez shed little light on his sudden candidacy in the District 37 race and lack of fundraising or campaigning. Local 10 began investigating Rodriguez's candidacy because of a hunch by executive producer Natalie Marira de Verona last month. That was a mouthful. Sheesh. Right? She was collecting candidates' headshots for election broadcast graphics and was curious why a candidate was nowhere to be found, not returning phone calls. A search of campaign documents filed by Rodriguez led to a money trail and campaign finance connections with other no-party third candidates in Florida Senate District 9 and Central Florida and District 39 in Miami-Dade. The District 39 candidate is 81-year-old Celso Alfonso, a retiree who named the woman he calls his wife as campaign treasurer. She owns a day spa and the home where we found Alfonso Tuesday afternoon. He, too, lied about his identity at first and finally admitted to being the candidate. Alfonso claimed claimed he had a lifelong dream of being in public service. He said he filled... He said he filed on his own that no one assisted him. A comparison of candidates Alfonso and Rodriguez shows unusual similarities. Both filed as no-party affiliate candidates, yet both had recently been registered Republicans. Isn't that interesting? 
both qualified as candidate on the same day, June 12th, 2020, by paying a qualifying fee. Both listed Gmail addresses with identical patterns, first initial, last name, and district number, and 2020. Both list one single contribution to their campaign. Both contributions are $2,000 self-loans, presumably to pay the filing fee. Both candidates' support appears to come from the same political action committee, Our Florida, that has no previous political contributions or expenditures listed. It is the PAC that paid for campaign flyers for the candidates, all done by the same Clermont, Florida mailhouse, Advance Impressions. Now, again, this is one of those situations where the guy who owns this PAC probably owns the printing company that's going to pay, like print out all these flyers and mailers. It's probably the same guy. So this guy is starting up a super PAC to pay himself to print out a bunch of fucking flyers for candidates that don't exist. Think about this, right? It's bizarre. And is this a Democrat hoax or is this a Republican hoax? Well, these people are registered Republicans. Republicans are more likely to do dark money programs and groups really makes you think. It really makes you think. Celso Alfonso gave conflicting answers about campaign flyers, first claiming there were none, then claiming his own campaign paid for them, though the expenditure is not listed in his campaign finance report. An unlisted campaign expenditure could be campaign finance violation. Oh, baby. The 370 our 370,000 pack expenditure to the printing house on October 5th is the sole expenditure of our Florida, and the PAC's only contributor is an entity called Proclivity, whose $370,000 contribution is listed two days earlier. Proclivity lists an address that traces back to a mailbox in a UPS store in Atlanta. Isn't that interesting? Florida law or Florida law allows the group to keep people behind its money private. Local 10 News could not locate any businesses registered in Florida or Georgia under the name Proclivity. The end of the money trail leaves no information on who is ultimately funding or at least at least three candidates for Florida Senate who did no campaigning and no fundraising, whose presence in the race might have recalculated the number of votes who cast the number of voters who cast votes for the Democrats in the race. Alec, uh, Alex Rodriguez received 3% of the D37 vote, more than 6,300 votes. The race currently is in recount, has a margin of 0 .2, 0 0.02 between the Democrat incumbent and the Republican challenger. The race for D39 was decided by 12.3%, a large enough margin to make Celso Alfonso's 1.5% of the vote moot. So... Isn't that weird? Just throwing that out there. Election fraud. This is what Trump and all of their goons are talking about. Election fraud, election fraud, election fraud, election fraud. And uh, isn't it weird that Republican-linked groups and Republicans are trying to run people that don't exist in these districts to unseat Democrat incumbents? But election fraud, right? Clearly, these election results don't matter. According to Trump, all of these elections should be redone. Let's just have a whole new 2020 election, shall we? That's what Trump says. And you know what? Let's do it. Because if there was a new 2020 election, a snap election of some kind, I do think Democrats would do a lot better. <laughs> I do think the people that have seen the Republican response to this election would not vote for a Republican again. And I will say that, and I will say that very loudly. So they're not going to do a recount. They're not going to do a redo. Why is that? If the election was all fraudulent, as Republicans are claiming, as Donald Trump is claiming, why don't we just do a redo? Are you scared of a redo? Does that worry you? Do you not want people to actually vote? We have all this information now. The Democrats have been exposed, right? So let's do a new election. Clearly, if we did a new election, you would win in a landslide, right, Trump? Right? Really makes you think? 